All right, so um, today we're going to talk about the ideal gas law. Um, the ideal gas law is a, is a simple um, <coughs> law um, uh, that relates um, the pressure and the volume of a gas to um, uh, to the um, the number of molecules um, and temperature using a constant that we call Boltzmann's constant. Okay. And so in this case, this is pressure, um, this is volume, this is the number of molecules, and this is just a constant. Oops. And this is the temperature, and this is important. It has to be in Kelvin. Alright, this is one place where you can't use degrees Celsius, so much people are going to do it on the exam, um, and don't get it marked wrong. Um, you need to use Kelvin all the time with the ideal gas law. Um, nothing else will work. Okay, so um, so the idea is basically what it says that, and you can see this kind of looking at the equation, um, is that, um, let's say, let's take the pressure for example. Um, if you keep the volume constant on something, and you want to increase the pressure, you can do it two ways. You can either do it by increasing the number of molecules in the, the container, let's say, or the temperature inside the container, all right? Um, or uh, if you keep the pressure constant and you want to increase the volume, let's say in the case of a balloon, right? Pressure is basically constant the whole time. You want to increase the volume, let's say of a balloon, you can do it by either adding molecules, that's your N, you basically do that by blowing it up, by adding more air molecules into the balloon, or you can do it by temperature. You can actually blow up a balloon basically just by heating it up. Um, and so anyway, this it gives you a nice relationship basically showing um, how uh, we can relate all these different variables. Um, this generally only works for gases. It's called the ideal gas because it only works for ideal gases. Um, it, it turns out this is a pretty good approximation though for most of the gases that we're gonna worry about um, and that, that we deal with in, in every day. So um, let's take a quick, uh, a, um, let's, let's take a, a couple of um, quick examples to, uh, to see how this works. Um, uh, first, let's, uh, let's just, uh, so we'll do a couple of examples with a tire, okay? Um, <clears throat> we have a tire here, um, it's a car tire. Um, my car tires um, are at 32, PSI or pounds per square inch. Um, and I'm sure I could find out. Um, um, it turns out that 32 PSI is around um, 220 uh, or 2.2 times 10 to the uh, 220,000 or 2.2 times 10 to the fifth pascals. All right. Um, so about um, about uh, um, about two atmospheres or so, um, and so uh, so what you can do is you can actually use that number uh, that two point two times ten to the fifth pascals, um, and let's say we also know um, if my tires are just sitting um, at uh, you know sitting sitting kind of on the ground on the ground at room temperature, which is equal to you know, let's say twenty five degrees Celsius. Um, or again, we're going to want to use Kelvin, two hundred ninety-eight Kelvin. All right. Um, and if we know the volume, the volume is going to be a little more difficult. But um, uh, let's say then, let's say the volume of a, a tire is let's say around ten liters, um, or uh, that's. Um, uh, 10 uh, to the minus 2 cubic meters, it turns out. That's the conversion from meters to meters. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and use all of our values, and we can actually find how many gas molecules are inside of a, um, of a normal tire. So we'll just solve for N. So we get PV is equal to N KBT. We get N is equal to PV divided by KBT. If I plug in my numbers, um, we get 
2.2 times 10 to the fifth pascals. We have 10 to the minus 2 cubic meters. We have uh, both pascals, so it's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. Um, and we have the temperature, which is just 298 Kelvin. All right. So um, we can go ahead and do that calculation. And when we do that calculation, we get um, that we have around 5.35 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or, or you know, air molecules. Um, you know, and obviously it's actually made up of a combination of nitrogen, hydrogen, I'm sorry, nitrogen and, and oxygen and, and some other stuff. But it gives you a rough number for basically how many um, how many air molecules you have basically in um, in one of your tires, or one of your car tires. We can do another um, cool thing which said we can actually show why you should always um, fill up, we can show why you should always fill up your car tire cold. Um, let's look at, um, let's uh, imagine that our car tire starts at 25, um, at 25 degrees C, and then it heats up to, um, you know, let's say, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, 40 degrees C. Um, let's say we're traveling on a really hot, you know, hot uh, highway for a long period of time so that it, it really, you know, so our, so our, um, our, 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 our um, wheels really heat up, our tires really heat up. Um, well, let's look at what that's going to do, for instance, to the pressure in our tires. So um, we can, again, use this equation. The one nice thing is that um, if you do this right, a lot of times you don't have to calculate all of these things. Um, so if we look, um, the, the things that are staying constant, uh, so so um, we're, we're looking to find the pressure, which is the thing that's going to be changing. V, N, and K, are all, and KV, the Boltzmann's constant, are always staying the same. So in other words, when you're driving, you don't lose any volume um, of your tire. Your tires stay the same size, and the number of molecules in your tires stay the same too. And so uh, what I recommend is, I bring, is bringing all of the things that you um, that are changing uh, over to one side, so you get P over T is equal to um, N K V over um, oops, over V, and you notice all of these are basically are are going to be a constant, all right. And so what you can say is that P initial, T initial, since these are all staying the same. Um, that's also going to be equal to P final, T final. And so you end up with this much simpler equation, which is that P initial over T initial is equal to P final over T final. Okay, and that's much easier to deal with. Um, and so uh, if we go back to our numbers, um, so again, our initial pressure uh, we found um, was, uh, what do we say? was uh, 2.2 times 10 to the 5th pascals. All right, um, I'm gonna bring my T final over up to the top here and put that here. So this is um, T hot, um, but that should be f um, 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, but we want it in Kelvin, so this is 40 plus 273. Alright, and then we divide that by 25 plus 273, and that should give us our P final. Again, let's plug that into the calculator. And you get a, your P final of. Um, 2.3 times 10 to the fifth pascals, um, which doesn't seem like a lot, but you can actually find some significant different pressures in, you know, by, by a few pounds, and, you know, again, this is a percentage or so, um, but if you actually go for a real extreme, let's say from 10 degrees or zero degrees Celsius up to, you know, 40 or 50 degrees, 
you actually see some really significant changes in your pressures um, whenever you um, whenever you try to um, to drive. So you always should, should always actually um, measure your air pressures um, whenever uh, before you start driving. Um, that just gives you a quick idea of how the ideal gas law works. It's pretty straightforward as far as the things we've done uh, go. Um, again, pressure volume equals nkt. There is one final way that you may see this, which is you actually will sometimes see the alternate form. Uh, PV is equal to nrt. All this is, this is very similar, except that this is a different constant. All right, that's that's um, the, this constant turns out as just eight point three one four, and the big difference is this small n. You notice I'm writing as a lowercase, where I've been writing as an uppercase before. This small n is the number of moles. All right, so you can do it kind of either with the number of molecules or the number of moles, um, which of course is different by Avogadro's number. Um, if you don't know this stuff, I would recommend looking in our book and reading through those sections to make sure that you kind of brush up on that. Um, but this is basically another form of it that we can do, um, and we'll do some of each in our class um, when we do it. All right, I hope that was helpful, um, uh, and uh, um, I'll see you guys in class.